Before we get started tonight, please join me in an open prayer. Father Yahuwah, we thank you for your grace and mercy. We thank you for your wisdom, love, caring, and understanding in these perilous times. Father Yahuwah, we thank you for our increased courage and faith. We thank you for your understanding above all. We thank you, Father Yahuwah, for allowing us to become better than who and what we were the day before and to help others to do the same. We thank you, Father Yahuwah, for allowing us to be here right now to witness your prophecies come to fruition. We thank you for your word because we know it will never return void. Father Yahuwah, we thank you for covering and keeping us through all manner of sin and evil, both seen and unseen. We thank you. We thank you for our guardian angels who watch over us, protect us, teach us, and keep us in isolation, protecting us from all manner of sin, evil, witchcraft, plots, plans, and agreements to our detriment. We thank you, Father Yahuwah, for keeping us in your will and giving us a purpose and a destiny to fulfill. Father Yahuwah, we thank you for delivering us so that we can appreciate you for who you are and not what you can grant us. May our words spoken and our actions be nothing but upliftment to your name. Father Yahuwah, may our words spoken and our actions be nothing but upliftment to your name, Father Yahuwah and upliftment to your word. May we be a guiding light, a beacon on top of a hill, shining so bright that all may see and glorify our Father Yahuwah, which art in heaven. Thank you, Father Yahuwah. In the name of your Son and our Savior, Yahusha. The book, When Called by God, a memoir that chronicles my journey from three to 51 years old is available in hardcover, paperback, digital, and audiobook worldwide through online retailers Amazon, Google, Books A Million, and many others. You can pick up these titles in print by visiting uslmag.com. That's U-S-L-M-A-G.com. Get a copy of the digital version visiting magster.com. That's M-A-G-Z-T-E-R dot com. Or just Google the title, When Called by God, inspired by USL Magazine. When Called by God, the copy table book with select chapters from the memoir is also available in print. Order online at uslmag.com or magcloud.com. That's U-S-L-M-A-G dot com or M-A-G-C-L-O-U-D dot com. The When Called by God book tour is sponsored by Inspire by USL Magazine. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to day five of our virtual book tour for When Called by God, a memoir that chronicles my journey from three to 51 years old. I'm Patrick Andrew Kelly, the author. We're thrilled to have you join us as we embark on this powerful journey of faith, transformation, and divine purpose. 706, A Trinity of Truth, is the three-part series next, From Torture and Molestation Under the Guise of Christianity. In this episode and the two to follow, we will journey through When Called by God, we'll venture into what may be the most challenging yet crucial chapters of this memoir, known simply as 706, a number that would become synonymous to unspeakable pain. These three chapters form a trinity of truth that exposes the darkest corners of religious hypocrisy while illuminating the unbreakable spirit of those who survive it. What happened behind the closed doors of 706 defies comprehension. Under the guise of Christian piety, my siblings and I endured systematic abuse that would leave scars far more profound than any physical wound. 
Our mother Elaine wielded her King James Bible like both a weapon and shield, while our stepfather Albert turned our home into a house of horrors. This trilogy isn't just a recounting of trauma. It's a testament to the resilience of the human spirit and the redemptive power of true faith. Through three carefully crafted chapters, we'll trace the journey from victims to survivors to victors. Chapter four, renamed The Foundation of Fear, will describe the initial descent into darkness, the establishment of systematic abuse, and the perversion of religious authority. Chapter five also renamed the foundation of fear. The voices of the voiceless describe my sister Donna's powerful testimony, the shared trauma of siblings and this conspiracy of silence in religious communities. And chapter six renamed the breaking of chains will recount the moment of rebellion, the cost of freedom, and the path of healing and redemption. Content warning. These episodes contain detailed accounts of physical, emotional, and sexual abuse. While we have approached these subjects with sensitivity, the raw truth of these experiences may be triggering for some listeners. We encourage viewers to prioritize their mental health and seek support if needed. If you are the victim of child abuse or sexual abuse, speak with someone today. Please contact the National Sexual Assault Hotline, available 24 hours at 1-800-656-4673. That's 1-800-656-4673. Or visit RAIN.org. That's R-A-I-N-N dot org. Why share such painful truths? Because in the words of our Savior, Yahusha, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. These chapters serve multiple purposes. To give voice to the voiceless who suffer behind closed doors, to expose the dangerous perversion of religion for abusive purposes, to demonstrate God's power to heal the deepest wounds, to offer hope, to others still trapped in cycles of abuse and to show how God can use our most incredible pain for his most significant purpose. As we embark on this three-part journey, we invite you to witness both the darkness and the light. Watch how God's redemptive power transformed the weapons meant to destroy us into tools for deliverance and healing. Each episode will include detailed readings from the chapter, commentary and context, spiritual insights and applications, resources for those seeking help, hope for healing and restoration. We believe these chapters, while challenging, are essential to understanding the full scope of God's redemptive work. They remind us that the dawn will eventually break no matter how dark the night is. No matter how deep the wound, healing is possible. No matter how strong the chains are, freedom awaits. Join us for this powerful trilogy as we uncover the truth about 706, not just as a place of pain, but as a crucible where God's transformative power proved more decisive than man's capacity for evil. Remember, you are not alone. Your story matters. And there is always hope. On Sunday, we begin chapter five, the foundation of fear, the voice of the voiceless, where the facade of religious righteousness first crumbled to reveal darkness lurking beneath. My sister Donna joins me in this heart wrenching episode to share her perspective of the horror we endured at 706 together we pull back the curtain on the systematic abuse that occurred under the guise of Christian piety, exposing how our mother Elaine wielded her Bible as both weapon and shield while enabling unspeakable acts of cruelty. This chapter gives voice to those who were forced into silence, particularly my sisters who endured sexual abuse. At the same time, our mother turned a blind eye 
through Donna's powerful testimony, you'll gain devastating insight into how religious hypocrisy can endure and perpetuate cycles of abuse and how the very institutions meant to protect the vulnerable can become weapons in the hands of predators. But even in these darkest revelations, you'll witness the unbreakable bond between siblings united in survival, the quiet strength that grows in shared suffering, and the first glimmers of the courage that would eventually lead to our liberation. This isn't just a recounting of trauma, it's a testament to the resilience of the human spirit and the power of truth to shatter chains of generational abuse. Join us for this crucial episode as we continue to unmask the true face of evil hiding behind religious facades and witness how God can use even our most painful truths to set others free. Through our shared testimonies, we pray that others still trapped in similar situations will find the courage to break their silence and seek help. Next week, we begin chapter six, The Breaking of Chains, a powerful testimony of liberation and divine intervention. In this gripping conclusion to our 706 trilogy, we witness the moment when fear finally gave way to courage, silence transformed into a battle cry, and God's power proved stronger than the chains of abuse. This chapter recounts how my siblings and I, after years of enduring unbreakable torment, finally united to confront our abusers. You'll experience the raw intensity of that pivotal confrontation, the price we paid for our freedom, and most importantly, the hand of God working behind the scenes to orchestrate our deliverance. But this isn't just a story of breaking free from physical bondage. It's a profound exploration of how God can transform victims into victors, how he can take the very weapons meant to destroy us and turn them into tools for others' liberation. Through tears, trauma, and ultimate triumph, you'll witness how the same faith of our abusers twisted to justify their cruelty became our pathway to authentic healing and purpose. Join us as we conclude this dark yet redemptive chapter of my journey, a testament to the truth that no chain is too strong for God to break, no wound too deep for him to heal, and no night too dark for his light to penetrate. This is where the faithful ministry of my life began, forged in the fires of 706, but refined by the loving hand of a father who specializes in turning ashes into beauty. Without further ado, here's chapter four, renamed the foundation of fear, specifically for this trilogy. In this opening chapter of our 706 series, we dive deep into the origins of a nightmare that would shape our lives forever. What began as a hope for a fresh start in Baltimore quickly dissolved into a carefully orchestrated reign of terror, where religious devotion became a smokescreen for systematic abuse. You'll witness how my siblings and I were wrenched from the loving embrace of our grandmother in Jamaica, only to be thrust into a household where violence, deprivation, and psychological torture were justified through twisted interpretations of scripture. Through vivid, unflinching detail, you'll experience the, the methodical way our mother Elaine and stepfather Albert established their dominance of fear. From brutal beatings disguised as discipline to the psychological warfare of forced feedings and deliberate humiliation. This chapter lays bare the insidious nature of abuse hiding behind religious authority, showing how our mother's constant Bible-wielding presence in church stood in stark contrast to the demonic cruelty she enabled at home. It's a sobering exploration of how evil can flourish when faith becomes a tool of oppression rather than liberation. But even in these dark foundations, you'll see the first seeds of resistance being planted, the unspoken bond between siblings who would eventually rise together against their tormentors. 
through this raw testimony, we shine a light into the shadows where abuse thrives, exposing the truth that sets captives free. Let us begin this difficult but necessary journey together, remembering that though the truth may be painful to hear, it can prevent history from repeating itself. As we listen to these passages, I invite you to open your hearts and minds to the transformative power of these words. Whether you're here seeking inspiration, grappling with challenges, or simply curious about one man's remarkable journey with God, you'll find something that speaks directly to your soul. After our readings, we'll have time for reflection and discussion via our corresponding email wcbymemoir at gmail.com that's wcbymemoir m-e-m-o-i-r at gmail.com so please feel free to share your thoughts or ask questions remember this is the beginning of our journey together through this powerful memoir I have an offer for you all and I want to say a little about it now so that it can begin to churn, take root and blossom into something captivating and awe-inspiring. So here it is. The most captivating moments of the Q&A with the author section will receive a full page feature in the upcoming quarter one 2025 issue titled a bold new world where one life-changing independent author will receive the coveted cover of issue two of inspired by usl magazine titled why am i here this is at jrny 365 let's begin to my lord and savior jesus christ words cannot express my gratitude for your unwavering love grace and faithfulness you have been my rock, redeemer, and constant companion on this journey of discovery and purpose. I am in awe of how you had orchestrated every step of my path, molding and shaping me from when I was three years old to this very moment. Through every trial, triumph, valley, and mountaintop, you have guided, strengthened, and revealed your perfect plan for my life. This book is a testament to your goodness and your power, a reflection of the incredible work that you have done in and through me. It is an offering of praise and thanksgiving, a declaration of your sovereignty and love. I dedicate this work to you, Jesus, my Savior, King, and friend. May every word on these pages bring glory and honor to your name, and may every life touched by this message be transformed by the power of your amazing grace. Thank you for calling, equipping, and entrusting me with this sacred task. Thank you for the privilege of being a vessel for your truth and love, and for the opportunity to share the revelations and insights that you have imparted to me. I am forever grateful for the way you have redeemed my story and given me a new purpose and identity in you. I am humbled by how you have taken the broken pieces of my life and fashioned them into a beautiful mosaic that reflects your artistry and grace. As this book goes forth into the world, it will be a catalyst for revival and awakening, a spark that ignites the hearts of men and women everywhere to seek you and to find their true destiny in you. I pray that every person who reads these words will encounter you freshly and powerfully and that the revelation of your love and your truth will forever change their lives. Thank you, Jesus, for the honor of being called by you and for the joy of serving you all the days of my life. May this book bring you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise, now and always. With deepest gratitude and love, Patrick Andrew Kelly. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a youth, for to all to whom I send you, you shall go and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Jeremiah, chapter 1, verse 7. Prologue There are moments in life when everything changes. Moments when the veil lifts, we glimpse something beyond the ordinary that shakes us to our core and challenges everything we thought we knew. For me, that moment came when I was at my lowest point, broken and desperate, crying out to a God I wasn't even sure was listening. But he was. And in that moment, he met me in a way that I never could have imagined, revealing truths and mysteries that would forever alter the course of my life and the lives of countless others. This book is the story of that revelation, the journey that led me to it, 
and the powerful message God has entrusted me to share with the world. It is a story of pain and triumph, darkness and light, despair and hope. But more than anything, it is a story of God's relentless love and faithfulness who pursues us, even in our most broken and lost state. As you read these pages, I pray that you will encounter that same love and faithfulness, hear the voice of God speaking directly to your heart, and receive transformation by the power of His truth. I pray that you will understand your true identity as a child of the Most High, your purpose and destiny in His plan, and the urgency of the hour we find ourselves. But I must warn you, this journey is not for the faint of heart. It will require you to confront the darkness within yourself and the world, let go of long-held beliefs and paradigms, and step out in faith and obedience, even when the path ahead seems uncertain. We live in a time of significant shaking and awakening. Challenges face the foundations of our society, and the battle for humanity's soul is raging like never before. God calls His people to rise, take their place as warriors and ambassadors of the kingdom, and be the light piercing the darkness. This book is not just my story, but the story of a generation, a movement, a remnant that God is raising for such a time. It is a clarion call to those with ears to hear and hearts to respond, to those willing to lay down their lives for the sake of the gospel and the advancement of His kingdom. So, as you embark on this journey with me, I ask that you come with an open heart and a willing spirit. Please allow the Holy Spirit to guide and illuminate every step so that you are ready to receive the revelation and activation He has in store for you. For we know the time is short, and the hour is urgent. The King is coming, and He is looking for a ready people, a bride who has made herself pure and spotless, an army who will march under His banner and take back the land for His glory. May you be found among them. May you hear the call and answer with a resounding yes. May you step into your true identity and purpose and become all God has destined you to be. The journey begins now. Let us walk together in faith and expectation, knowing that the best is yet to come. With love and anticipation, Patrick Andrew Kelly. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am. Send me. Isaiah, chapter 6, verse 8. Introduction Dear reader, you hold a book that is more than just a collection of words on a page. It is a testament to the power of God's love, the reality of His presence, and the transformative journey He invites us to embark upon. It is a story of brokenness and redemption, darkness and light, despair and hope. But more than anything, it is a revelation of the heart of a father who stops at nothing to pursue his children and bring them to the fullness of their destiny. My name is Patrick Andrew Kelly, and I am honored to share this story with you. But in truth, it is not just my story. It is the story of a generation, a movement, a remnant that God is raising for such a time as this. It is a story that transcends individual experiences and speaks to the collective longing of the human heart for meaning, purpose, and connection with the divine. The journey you will embark upon will challenge everything you thought you knew about yourself, God, and the world around you. It will require you to confront the deepest parts of your being, grapple with the reality of the spiritual realm, and make choices that will determine the course of your life and your impact on others. But I promise you this. If you approach this book with an open heart and a willing spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to guide and illuminate every page, you will encounter the living God in a way that will forever change you. You will discover your true identity as a son or daughter of the Most High, your unique purpose and calling in His plan, and the incredible destiny He has prepared for you. Throughout these pages, we will explore the depths of God's love and faithfulness, the power of His Word and His Spirit, and the reality of the spiritual battle that rages around us. We will delve into the mysteries of our true identity as the people of God, the urgency of the hour in which we find ourselves, and the call to rise and take our place as warriors and ambassadors of the kingdom. But this book is not just a theoretical exploration of spiritual truths. It is a practical guide, a roadmap, a blueprint for living out the abundant life that Jesus promised us. It is a call to action, a challenge to step out of our comfort zones and into the adventure of faith that God has invited us to participate in. Within these pages, you will find stories of my struggles and triumphs, revelations, and encounters that have shaped my life and ministry. But more importantly, you will find the timeless wisdom and revelation of God's Word, the guidance and encouragement of the Holy Spirit, and the testimonies of countless others who have walked this path before us. This book can ignite a fire within you, awaken dreams and desires that have lain dormant, 
and propel you into the fullness of all God has called you to be. But it is not a journey for the faint of heart. It will require courage, perseverance, and a willingness to surrender everything to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. So, as you begin this journey, I'd invite you to approach it with expectation and anticipation, knowing that the God of the universe is waiting to meet you on every page. I pray that His Spirit will breathe upon these words and bring them to life in your heart. His love will overwhelm you, and His truth will set you free. May you discover, as I have, that there is no more excellent adventure than walking in the fullness of God's purpose for your life. May you experience the joy, peace, and abundance of living in an intimate relationship with Him. May you become a beacon of hope and light in a world desperately needing the gospel's transformative power. The journey begins now. Let us walk together, hand in hand with our Heavenly Father, and watch as He unfolds the incredible story that He has written for each of our lives. With love and expectation, Patrick Andrew Kelly Defend the weak and the fatherless. Uphold the cause of the poor and the oppressed. Rescue the weak and the needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. Psalm, chapter 82, verses 3 and 4, NIV. Chapter 4, 706 Torture and Molestation Under the Guise of Christianity. Part 1. Imagine a home where the very people entrusted to love, nurture, and protect you are instead the source of your deepest pain and betrayal. In this place, the facade of religious devotion masks unspeakable evils committed against the most innocent and helpless. Growing up, my siblings and I faced this reality in the house of horrors known simply as 706. Behind closed doors, our mother, Elaine, and stepfather, Albert, subjected us to years of psychological, physical, and sexual abuse, all while portraying themselves as upstanding Christians in the community. In this chapter, I vulnerably share the excruciating details of the trauma we endured at the hands of our sadistic parents. From brutal beatings and food deprivation to molestation and emotional battery, no form of abuse was off limits in their reign of terror. With unflinching honesty, I recount the specific incidents seared into my memory and psyche. Being forced to strip naked before whippings so my stepfather could ogle my sister's body, the forced feedings that left us vomiting and begging for mercy, and the pervasive sexual abuse my sister silently suffered as our mother looked the other way. But I also tenderly unpacked the bittersweet bonds forged between us siblings as we endured the unthinkable together. Amidst the pain, we found fleeting moments of solidarity, whether sneaking food to quell our unrelenting hunger or finally uniting to fight back against our abusers when the torture reached a breaking point. Though the abuse ultimately splintered our family as we each sought escape and coping mechanisms, those indelible years at 706 formed a crucible of shared suffering that would forever mark our journeys and identities. But more than just a raw expose of domestic violence and religious hypocrisy, this chapter traces my agonizing wrestling with how a good God could allow such unspeakable evil and suffering. It grapples with the dissonance between a supposedly loving Heavenly Father and the earthly ones who shattered my understanding of safety and provision. As I emerged from the cocoon of unhealed trauma, I began to unearth the quiet presence of a divine defender behind the scenes of even my darkest hours of violation. With new eyes, he planted seeds of unusual empathy discernment and passion for justice that would eventually empower me to become an undaunted voice for the oppressed and abused. Now, after half a lifetime spent contending for my miraculous healing and freedom, I'm finally embracing my call to share this brutal chapter. I bear my scars to encourage other survivors to bring their stories out of hiding and into the light where the shame can no longer survive. My prayer is that courageously mining the ministry buried in this trauma unleashes a mass exodus from the strongholds of silence torment. May it set other captives on the path to healing and purpose, rewriting their narratives from powerless victims to unwitted overcomers. No more whitewashing the truth or downplaying the depravity we endured. It's time for changemakers with 706 stories to rise, anointed by their deliverance, to dismantle generational cycles of abuse disguised as distorted Christianity. So brace yourself for a sobering exploration of the atrocities perpetrated against my family but not without hope for the futures forged from our survival. We declare that the chain of perversion and torment ends here, and the journey to a new legacy begins. Parents must be the ultimate guardians, protectors, and role models for their innocent, vulnerable children. They are supposed to exemplify love, safety, morality, and empathy, while thoughtfully guiding tender young souls through the tumultuous journey of growing up. But for my siblings and me, 
the very people entrusted with our care became the source of unfathomable torment. My sister Donna and I were wrenched from the loving embrace of our grandmother in Jamaica, a wise and spiritual matriarch, only to be thrust into a living hell masquerading as a Christian home at 706. Under the warped authority of our birth mother, Elaine, and stepfather, Albert, we endured years of physical, emotional, and sexual abuse, cloaked in religious hypocrisy. Two deeply corrupt souls, gratifying their perverse desires at the expense of their children's well-being, formed an unholy alliance of depravity and evil that permanently scarred us. Our tender spirits are starved by our parents of the nurturing affection, security, and dignity every child deserves. In its place, an oppressive climate of fear, deprivation, suffering, and inappropriate degradation reign, stripping us of our innocence and self-worth. Elaine shrouded her wickedness behind a facade of devout Christianity, always armed with her King James Bible, as both a weapon and shield against anyone who dared question her mothering. This blatant hypocrisy is what drove me from the church by my early 20s, unable to reconcile the manipulation of faith with the authenticity of God. Our nightmare began mere months after Donna and I, then just seven and eight, arrived in Baltimore in the late summer of 1979. Culture shock set in as we grappled with a new country, school challenges, and harsh, unfamiliar weather so different from Jamaica's warmth. But nothing could have prepared us for the cruelty and hardship we faced at home from our mother and stepfather. The abuse started under the guise of discipline over our academic struggles, which were exacerbated by learning difficulties and being bullied for our thick Jamaican accents. Each mistake or failure to recite our multiplication tables resulted in an increasingly brutal beating from our mother. She wielded switches, tree branches, extension cords, pots and pans, and even a hot iron as instruments of abuse to scourge our naked bodies. Our stepfather relished in this ritual, forcing us to strip down before whippings so he could ogle my sister's budding bodies and make sexual advances. I later learned he repeatedly molested my sisters, Donna, Lisa, and Vicky. At the same time, our mother looked the other way, even accusing them of trying to seduce her husband when they begged for help. But the torture didn't end there. Elaine and Albert began sadistically controlling our food intake, denying us meals and forcing us kids to resort to stealing and sneaking food just to war off the gnawing ache of hunger. When caught, we endured yet more discipline. One particularly horrific incident became seared into my memory. Accused of being greedy for requesting second helpings at dinner, we were made to stay seated at the table as they force-fed massive quantities of pork and beans. Our mother and stepfather forced bowl after bowl down our throats until we began vomiting. But even then, the psychological torment persisted. The only way I survived the unrelenting abuse was by mentally escaping into television and movies when permitted, imagining what it would be like to live in a loving family where parents didn't beat and starve their children. I'd lay on the bedroom floor sobbing, my soul aching for the safety of my grandmother's arms and struggling to comprehend how she could have sent us into this hell. After years of food deprivation, beatings, molestation, and emotional battery, we older kids finally reached a breaking point. During yet another force-feeding session, we collectively fought back against our abusers, beating our stepfather to the brink of hospitalization. While it marked a turning point in some mistreatment, the damage was already indelibly done. One by one, my siblings were thrown out of the house to fend for themselves as teens, turning to drugs and homelessness to cope with the trauma. My beautiful sister Lisa, once a brilliant student full of promise, ultimately lost her battle with addiction, a casualty I firmly blame on the depravity we endured. By the time I was expelled from 706 at 18 for daring to assert any defiance, I was the last sibling standing in that hellish household. It would be over a decade before I reconnected with some of my family again, the wounds still so painfully raw. Through the grapevine, I learned of our stepfather's miserable, drunken demise after a basement fall and our mother's physical deterioration, permanently marked by the guilt of her sins as a parent. While I reluctantly attended his funeral at the insistence of my siblings and even attempted to grant forgiveness to them both, no reconciliation could undo the atrocities committed against us innocent children at 706. Looking back, I still wrestle with how a supposedly loving God could allow such unfathomable evil and suffering to occur to us as children. What kind of divine cruelty or apathy would stand by as chosen guardians physically, sexually, and psychologically brutalize the very souls entrusted to their care? For years, I grappled with this crippling spiritual dissonance, 
unable to reconcile my innate yearning for a benevolent heavenly father with the earthly ones who shattered my understanding of parental love and provision. If God was real, if he genuinely cherished us as a son and daughters, then where was he in our darkest hours of violation and torment? But as I emerged from the cocoon of my unhealed trauma, I slowly began to recognize the quiet presence of an almighty defender at work, behind the scenes of even our most shattering circumstances. He was the invisible shield preventing our stepfather's force feedings from causing us to choke to death literally. His supernatural strength empowered us to finally unite and stand against the abuse we got in our teens. Time and again, God met me in the moments I mentally disassociated from 706, the first glimpses of a spiritual lifeline extending into my private hell. Through premonitions and divine encounters, he gently assured me that our suffering was not unseen and would not go unanswered. He counted every tear and measured every wound for recompense. While feeling abandoned and debased, God sowed seeds of resilience and unusual compassion in us, the spiritual fruit I could not yet perceive. Unbeknownst to me, God was building a profound capacity for empathy, discernment and hunger for justice that would one day empower me to be an undaunted voice for the oppressed and abused. The experiences intended to destroy us were being redeemed as instruments of anointing, equipping us to bind up the brokenhearted and dismantle generational cycles of dysfunction. What the enemy fashioned for evil, God was alchemizing for good. Our parents' actions were indefensibly wicked, the effects of which no platitudes can undo. They will forever answer for the sacred trust they shattered and the minds, bodies, and spirits they broke. No accolades about how we miraculously turned out can soften the severity of their sins. But in learning to separate who they were from who we are, God has uprooted the bitter seeds of hate and condemnation that once threatened to devour me. Though I still bear the scars of their unimaginable cruelty, I'm no longer held captive by their demons. By the grace of God, I can genuinely declare that forgiveness has set me free from perpetuating the cycle of dysfunction. The chain of abusive Christian hypocrisy and perversion masked as parenting ends with me, severed by the power of love and redemption they could never comprehend. From this place of hard-fought healing and wholeness, I'm finally embracing the call to be a living testament to God's ability to craft purpose from pain. After half a lifetime spent running from the trauma of 706, I'm now facing it head-on, mining for the ministry buried beneath the rubble. No more sanitizing the gory details or downplaying the gravity of what our parents did to us. The potency of our healing is directly proportional to our willingness to acknowledge the depths of our wounding. Only by bringing the atrocities into the light can we disarm the shame that once silenced and isolated us as survivors. So I'm boldly declaring the depravity, refusing to let Elaine and Albert's fake Christianity off the hook for the hell they put us through. I'm bringing language to the unspeakable, so that others drowning in the aftermath of similar evils will know they're not alone. My prayer in vulnerably sharing this chapter of my story is that it encourages other survivors to confront their abusers, begin unburdening the torture they've too long carried in secret, and dare to believe that God can take even their most shattering trauma and transform it into a living testament of His redemptive power. You did not deserve what befallen you, and it was not your fault. There is no shame in your suffering nor limits to God's ability to bring supernatural healing and purpose. Your story, in all its painful truth, is the very key to your freedom and to unveiling the strength, dignity, and giftedness your abusers tried to suffocate. So be brave, my friends. Start unearthing what you've hidden in darkness and invite God into the cracks of your broken places. Inch by inch, memory by memory, release the poison and make space for His promise to restore everything the enemy shattered. The journey to wholeness is neither linear nor straightforward, as the fragments of trauma have a way of resurfacing when we least expect them. Healing requires a daily, sometimes hourly, intentionality to uproot the lies that abuse buried in the epicenter of our being. It demands gut-wrenching vulnerability with ourselves, God, and trusted advocates who can call out our blind spots and remind us of our fundamental dignity. But I'm here to remind you that you are worth every grueling step of the process. The life awaiting you on the other side of secrets and silence is more vibrant and purposeful than you can imagine. Brick by brick, truth by truth, freedom by freedom, keep contending for your resurrection story. As you do, I pray that the voice of your Heavenly Father drowns out every condemning lie and perverted biblical twisting until you know in your marrow that you are seen and cherished. You will spend the rest of your days unleashing redemptive justice for even the most battered and broken among us. 
Your unrelenting restoration is where the true power of the gospel takes center stage. May your hard-fought hope become the catalyst that raises an army of wounded healers, anointed by their deliverance to dismantle 706 strongholds wherever they are. Let the exodus begin. It would be better for them to be thrown into the sea with a millstone tied around their neck than to cause one of these little ones to stumble. Luke, chapter 17, verse 2, NIV. I have an offer for you all, and I want to say a little about it now so that it can begin to churn, take root and blossom into something captivating and awe-inspiring. So here it is. The most captivating moments of the Q&A with the author section will receive a full page feature in the upcoming quarter one 2025 issue titled A Bold New World, where one life-changing independent author will receive the coveted cover of issue two of Inspired by USL Magazine titled Why Am I Here? This is At Journey 365. I'm your host, Patrick Andrew Kelly. The topic for the entire season is the spirit of homosexuality, and we will delve into a subject so sensitive, even AI didn't want to have anything to do with it. This season explores the transformative power of the spirit of homosexuality and how it has become a cultural icon, converting even the toughest deniers. From the story of the little baby boy to the unbeknownst flirtation of the heteros and much more, season two starts with the undeniable questions. Were you born homosexual? Have you considered how your preference aligns with the Most High Yahuwah's word? At what point can we have a straight-faced conversation about the rapture? And are you ready? Leading into the final episode, the podcast promises to touch on every point from when I turned homosexual to God's word and the homosexual covenant of marriage to the clarion call for saved lives, and so on. Between all the chatter, tears, deliverance, and so on, we will overcome some personal struggles. We will address broader cultural shifts and explore how our faith can provide a compass in these turbulent times. We'll be joined by thought-provoking guests, share potent testimonies, and offer practical guidance for living out our calling in an increasingly complex world. Whether you were a listener from last season or joining us for the first time, I invite you to open your heart and mind as we embark on this journey together. Let's challenge ourselves to grow, to love more deeply, and to be the change we wish to see in the world. Get ready for raw honesty, inspiring stories, and transformative insights. This is at JRNY 365 Season 2. This is at Journey 365. I'm your host, Patrick Andrew Kelly. Join us Friday at 10 p.m. to continue our series, The Spirit of Homosexuality. Join us tomorrow night for the beginning of an exclusive virtual book tour of When Called by God, a memoir that chronicles my journey from 3 to 51 years old. Discover a story of divine inspiration and personal growth. Key exploration points will be my spiritual awakening, pivotal moments reinforcing my divine connection, challenges I overcame through faith and the impact of answering God's call. When Called by God is a testament to the power of faith, the beauty of personal growth, and the extraordinary journey that unfolds when we heed the divine call. So join us tomorrow night at 10 p.m. And thank you in advance for listening and spreading the word. This experience will be transformative and impactful. Discover other titles from AdSpira One, such as Inspire by USL Magazine, which has two recent issues, When Called by God, Patrick Andrew Kelly, 
and the Embrace Method, Vladimir Louison. Available in print and digital, the book, When Called by God, a memoir that chronicles my journey from three to 51 years old, is available in hardcover, paperback, digital, and audiobook worldwide through online retailers Amazon, Google, Books A Million, and many others. You can pick up these titles in print by visiting uslmag.com. That's U-S-L-M-A-G.com. Get a copy of the digital version visiting magster.com. That's M-A-G-Z-T-E-R.com. Or just Google the title, When Called by God, Inspired by USL Magazine. When Called by God, the copy table book with select chapters from the memoir is also available in print. Order online at uslmag.com or magcloud.com. That's U-S-L-M-A-G.com or M-A-G-C-L-O-U-D.com. Have a good night and may Yahuwah guide and keep you all. Patrick A. Kelly owns a copyright in and to all content in and transcripts of At Journey 365 podcast with all rights reserved as well as his right to publicity. You are welcome to share the transcript up to a maximum of 400 words in media articles such as the AJC and other notable media platforms on your personal website, in a non-commercial article or blog post, and or on a personal social media account for non-commercial purposes, provided that you include attribution to at Journey 365 podcast and link back to the at Journey 365 podcast URLs. Media outlets with advertising models are permitted to use excerpts from the transcript per the above. No one is authorized to copy any portion of the podcast content or use Patrick A. Kelly's name, image, or likeness for any commercial purpose or use, including without limitation, inclusion in any books, ebooks, book summaries or synopsis, streaming media, TV, film, or on a commercial website or social media site, such as Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, threads, TikTok, X, etc., that offers or promotes you or another products or services. For the sake of clarity, media outlets are permitted to use photos of Patrick A. Kelly from the At Journey 365 podcast or licensed photos of Patrick A. Kelly from commercial image platforms. Content shared from Tim.blog.